Another question that I think is really fascinating, uh, it's by John. And the question is, basically, what's the deal with research looking at cognitive benefits of creatine supplementation? Um, John mentions he, he saw some articles years ago talking about how exciting and promising this is, uh, but hasn't really heard a lot since. Um, there's some interesting ins and outs of the creatine literature when it comes to cognitive stuff. I think I do think there's a little bit of bias uh, in the sport nutrition world where like creatine does really well with muscle stuff. And, and I think people, there's just this kind of this glow surrounding creatine where you're like, oh, it's so great. It's got to be incredible for bone and it's got to be incredible for the brain. And it's, it's got to be incredible for every organ system and every tissue. And like, you know, you can go through one by one and say, okay, there's strong evidence here. There's decent evidence over here and, and all, all down the list. So I don't want to sound like I'm like a, a creatine skeptic or anything. Creatine's excellent. But when it comes to the brain stuff, uh, there's a, a little bit more nuance to it. So like, for example, when we, uh, you know, supplement with creatine, do a creatine loading phase or take, uh, you know, a, a maintenance dose for, you know, a, a month or two, we see pretty appreciable, pretty large increases in uh, muscle creatine saturation. It's far more uh, muted when it comes to brain creatine. So like if you look at the studies where they give creatine supplements and they try to increase brain levels, uh, I'm, I'm going to link a review in the show notes, but at the time that this review was written, I think in 2021, there had been 12 studies looking at human uh, brain creatine levels after supplementation. Generally speaking, uh, so so nine of the 12 showed a significant increase in brain creatine. Um, and we're talking about a magnitude of like five to 10%. I, I am intensely curious about this. How are they measuring that? Uh, I imagine they're not taking brain biopsies. Are no, they? I, I think they do the, uh, the, like, uh, the, you know, how, how they do like in the muscle when, when you can look for like carnosine content, like the, the PNMR, the, I think, or the MRS TMS. No, no. Um, I'll, I'll ah, whatever we'll look into. There, there's some, like um, some acronym. <laughs> it's related to MRI, yeah. but, but they can look at particular, uh, compounds within different tissues okay, okay. non-invasively. So like, um, with, with creatine, in, even in the muscle, they'll sometimes use this method. It's very similar to MRI. I think it's MRS or NMR. I'll have to look it up. Okay. Uh, we're going to look like dumbasses yeah, when this show goes out. I mean... It's some, we're, we're some not, acronym. We're not experts in medical imaging. <laughs> no, we're not. I feel like we threw out more potential acronyms there than the average person could. So I, I feel good about our performance. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> <laughs> Pick three letters, go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, th there is a non-invasive way to quantify this stuff. Um, usually, looks like it goes up maybe 5 to 10%. And I'll also note, it looks like there, there's some pretty decent evidence that you need a higher dose if you're trying to move the needle with brain creatine. And the reason I say that is like, when they look at a, a vegetarian versus an omnivore, when you look at muscle creatine, you can figure out pretty quick, like vegetarians generally have lower saturation of muscle creatine because they're getting less in the diet. It's very straightforward. If you look at brain content, vegetarian versus omnivore, there is not a, a noteworthy or detectable difference. Uh, so the amount coming in from like a normal diet is not even really moving the needle with brain creatine. A lot of that's just getting synthesized endogenously. Um, you know, like I said, there is some evidence that you can move the needle with supplementation with high doses, but like some of these studies are suggesting that you might need to do like four weeks of a loading dose. So, you know, muscle loading is like five or seven days at 20 grams a day. Some of these studies are suggesting like 20 grams a day for a month. Uh, and I don't even know what the, uh, how long you would have to maintain that 20 gram dose. I'm not really certain. Uh, if you have to do it for four weeks, that sounds more like a maintenance dose to me. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, I'm not going to speculate about how quickly creatine reverts to baseline in the brain. Cause I have absolutely never looked at that, at that data. One thing I will note though, uh, guanadino acetic acid is a creatine precursor. If you're really interested in cognitive benefits of creatine, might be worth looking into that. It is available as a supplement and it might be better for increasing uh, brain saturation of creatine. So it's kind of like a citrulline versus arginine type 
Yeah, situation. yeah. So th there is some reason to believe that uh, taking that precursor might be more effective. Uh, and, and there is some, some research to back that up. Um, so anyway, creatine in the brain, is it affected by dietary creatine intake from food? It's not really a big enough fluctuation to move the needle. Uh, even omnivores aren't getting that many grams of creatine in their typical diet. Um, can you move the needle with supplementation? Probably, but it takes a pretty high dose. When does this actually matter? Uh, the most promising research showing some kind of benefits related to uh, cognitive processing or just like recovery from brain injury, it's usually when there's some pretty noteworthy stressors that, that are actually challenging the brain. Uh, so we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, there, there, there's looking at things like sleep deprivation, uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, various uh, pathologies influencing the brain, uh, of course, traumatic, major or mild traumatic brain injury. Usually it's in the case of stressors. Uh, another one is like sleep deprivation or hypoxia combined with exercise, which is energetically, I, I think, pretty demanding on the brain. Uh, usually you're going to see these types of things in stressor, stressful situations for the brain. Um, so like your average person who's just taken like five grams a day, or they have like a pre-workout with like three grams a day. And they're like, oh, this is doing wonders for my cognition on like a normal day-to-day -day basis. I'm honest. I mean, I'm open to it, but I'm pretty skeptical based on the vibes I get from the literature. It's not something that's been explored a great deal, but I, I, it's it's going to be neutral to to slightly positive. So I, I'm not trying to like, uh, you know, rain on anybody's parade. But you know, I, I think the biggest likelihood of benefit comes from really high dose supplementation in the context of actual, you know, stressful situations to the brain. Like I said, uh, clinical pathologies, uh, brain injuries, sleep deprivation, things like that. Uh, but while I'm on this topic. Uh, there's one thing that I kind of have to to mention. There was a thing going around back in the day where everybody said, oh, if you're a vegetarian, you have to take creatine. Otherwise, your brain simply is not going to work. Uh, and as you can tell from the things I've said already, that's a weird statement because like vegetarian versus omnivore, brain creatine levels are very similar. So yeah. you might be wondering where that came from. As far as I can tell, that was largely driven by one paper, uh, and it was uh, a trial where it's kind, of, kind of like the creatine and and like does creatine make you bald? Concerned? Yeah, yeah. Or does does caffeine make creatine ineffective? Concerns. Yeah, although yeah. that one's getting up there. That's got the, like five papers. Yeah, now. but but I'm saying like initially, it yeah, was just yeah, based yeah. on one thing. It, um, it's weird. Like the uh, the supplement with maybe the most research on it. Seems like the things people discuss the most are maybe the least supported uh, uh, aspects in that entire body of research. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so like with the vegetarian omnivore thing, people are like, oh, for the cognitive effects, vegetarians very much need it. If you go to the paper that everybody cites to say that, the only defensible conclusion is not that creatine supplementation has a special effect for cognition in vegetarians it's that creatine makes omnivores way dumber and vegetarians are simply immune to that effect like that <laughs> is the direct interpretation of the data do i believe that absolutely not i think it was a false positive that caused just a fluky poor performance in the omnivore group on the cognitive i think it was like a memory task or something like yeah. that but yeah so like people said like okay uh this, for some reason, <laughs> vegetarians who were on creatine did not suffer this huge drop off in cognitive performance. And that just got kind of twisted around into saying creatine has a way more favorable cognitive effect in vegetarians when that's just not at all what the data actually showed. Uh, so it was kind of like a misinterpretation that through a game of telephone really picked up in the research world and then got kind of relayed outside of the research world. Uh, so conclusions here, uh, creatine's nice. It's, it's very, very good for high intensity exercise performance. There's little glimpses that it does nice stuff for other systems in the body, other tissues, other organ systems. There, there's, you know, I'm not trying to be negative about creatine. It's very, very nice. 
the cognitive stuff isn't quite as supported for like day-to-day -day use. Like I said, uh, you know, traumatic brain injury, various pathologies impacting the brain, maybe sleep deprivation. Um, you know, there are instances where creatine appears to be somewhat helpful, uh, but generally speaking, it takes a pretty high dose. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's, uh, th that's about all I have to say about uh, cognitive aspects of creatine. Might be slightly helpful with a normal dose that's kind of, you know, the the standard five grams a day that you take for exercise might be helpful in some situations, but I, I wouldn't, uh, I certainly like, you know, sometimes people are like, you know what, I'm not noticing anything in the gym, but I'm afraid to go off creatine because I don't want to get dumber. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think there's any evidence to support that type of approach.